Won't you join me as we pause for a moment in prayer? Lord, in these moments, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts would all be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I would just like to remind you and lift up to you today from the scripture. It says, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. For this, we should be truly thankful. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. You know, it is a Thanksgiving Sunday today. As we are looking at this week and Thanksgiving, and we think of the nation and this special holiday that we all celebrate together. But when we come together as God's people, the best and the most and the, the, for, the for, most forefront in our mind, if you'll bear with me, the most forefront in our mind should be our thankfulness to God, our Creator. God who created us, God who sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and our risen Lord, who is with us now and sustained us, sustains us through all things through the Holy Spirit. If we can't be thankful for that, I don't know what we can be thankful for. Isn't that tremendous that God would love us so much to in the very beginning create us out of dust? Just create us. Create us for one purpose, and that is to love and worship God. And then when we weren't able to do it, we weren't able to get it right, because we're human. Uh, Jesus came to us as a baby in the manger, God's only son, came to us to be our savior, our redeemer, to show us how to live, to show us how to love, and to show us that even in death, laying down his life on the cross, death is not the final answer, and we have eternal life through Jesus Christ. So when God gave us the gift of life, it was an eternal gift, a gift to us, offering to us to share this loving relationship. That's what this was all about. That is something to truly be thankful for. Well, you know, I, I'm sure you have lots of memories from Thanksgiving, uh, lots of times that you've gotten together either with friends or family, uh, and you've share, you shared a table, you probably have sat around the table, and I hope that you have uh, all lifted up, taken time to lift up what you were thankful for. And it is, it is my hope and my prayer that you will be able to do that this Thanksgiving. Uh, some of us are not able to do that, and sometimes uh, Thanksgiving brings a sadness. It may be one of the hardest holidays. Maybe folks, uh, dear ones that you love, have passed on, and there's an empty place at the table, and there's a sense of heartache that goes along with that. But God understands and God is with us through all things, and for this we can be thankful. There may be situations where uh, uh, maybe your children, if you have had children, have all grown up and you're like an empty nester and you don't know exactly what this Thanksgiving is going to be like. I'm kind of like this, but I, we'll see what happens. I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, my sister uh, who has had this happen before, isn't it great to have people go before you who can say, wait a minute, this is what you need to think about. But when her family grew up and had families, and you can't be in five places at one time, she says, I decided to go to the local soup kitchen and help with the turkey, with the dressing. Be a blessing to someone. What a wonderful thing to be able to share this Thanksgiving and make it a Thanksgiving for someone else. Perhaps you've been one of these persons. Uh, you know, on Thanksgiving, maybe you've been to the different community meals and and that's where you get together, and that's where you thank God as you share food. What a blessed time that is. However you spend it, whether it's by yourself, whether it's with other people, remember how much you are loved and cherished by God as God's child. And think back on uh, the many Thanksgivings that we've had over the years. I remember when I was a child, um, sometimes it seemed like that day happened so quickly 
I would just look back at it and think that maybe I had gone unnoticed by everybody else. I don't know if you've ever been part of a large family. Uh, it's, it's not like having that one child and two parents or whatever picturesque thing that you, you might imagine. Uh, and you kind of get lost in the fray sometimes, you know. Uh, and then there's other times, Thanksgiving, that maybe you're the center of attention and it might not be because of a good thing. So you never know how Thanksgiving is going to turn out. It could be that everything's going beautiful and everybody is just having a wonderful time and then all at once something is said and then uh, all turbulence breaks loose. But whatever your Thanksgiving is, just remember, uh, we are called to love and be in community and love one another as God's family. So whether you're with friends, whether it's a special friend, whether it's uh, uh, by yourself just thanking God for all the many blessings that you have, I pray that you will have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, you know, there was a, a minister, and every Sunday he was very optimistic and, and uh, very thankful and just very positive. And one day it's just horrible weather outside. It is just storming. The wind is blowing. It's cold. Uh, and, and so one of the parishioners thinks, well, I wonder what he's going to say that he has to be happy about today. <laughs> so as they're all gathered together, the minister stands up to begin his sermon. He says, well, I think we all should just be very thankful today that all the days are not like this one. <laughs> <laughs> you can always find something to be thankful for. And my... Uh, my uh, my kids, my kids' great grandmother, my grandmother, she would say, "Count your blessings, count your blessings." The kids would be upset, crying about something or fussing about something. This one didn't get as much of that, or wanted something else, and you could just see. She would say, "Wait, I think it's time to stop, and it's time to count." And before long, everybody knew what that meant. It means stop and count your blessings. So there was a time when, uh, you know, we would say, "Okay, if." if if you're upset because of a gift you didn't get, or maybe there's something you wanted to go to that you couldn't, or whatever it was, it's time to stop and thank God. Thank God who loves you, cares for you. Thank God for family, for friends, for God providing for us. And, and uh, thank God uh, for all the blessings that we do have. And you know, it might seem very simple, but it's, it's a big deal to have a roof over your head in the winter, to have a warm home, or as warm as we can be in the cold, uh, or, or to have food to eat, to have that friend to call when you need to talk, to have a loving church family that you know you can depend on. All of these things are wonderful blessings, and we could go on with, with lots of them. I'd like to share something with you, and um, this is from uh, someone named Dennis Prager, and it says, happiness is a serious problem. So happiness is a serious problem. He says, there's a secret to happiness, and it is gratitude. So think about this. He says, all happy people are grateful, and ungrateful people cannot be happy. We tend to think that it is being unhappy that leads people to complain, but it's truer to say that it is complaining that leads people to becoming unhappy. Complaining that reminds us and causes us to be unhappy. Become grateful, and you will become a much happier person. So happiness, happiness is a serious business. But we can be very grateful. We can be very grateful for, for lots of things in this world. And sometimes we just take things for granted. It's hard to be grateful and thankful if you take things for granted. You know, there's lots of blessings, lots of ways that unexpectedly we get blessed. So if you, if you think of all the things that are just ordinary, think of the extraordinary. Think of things as not promised, but as blessings. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is a blessing. Tomorrow is a blessing. So we should be very thankful and grateful for Jesus' words to us today. And those are that all of you who are hungry, come to I will give you food. All of you who are thirsty, come to me. I will quench your thirst. This is this wonderful uh, bread and, and living water, the Holy Spirit that Jesus offers us today. 
This is something to be most grateful for. A savior, a redeemer, a God who loves us no matter what, through everything. So this holiday season, as you're thinking of Thanksgiving, remember what we are truly thankful for, and that is God, our Savior, our Redeemer, and all the blessings of the church and of our families. Lots of things to be thankful for. So may God bless you this Thanksgiving week and carry your many blessings into Christmas and the new year. And now let us pray together. Oh Lord, we thank you for these multitude of blessings. We thank you for your wonderful fruit of the Spirit as we harvest this fruit to this this fruit to our souls and our spirit. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for giving us this peace and this joy, this comfort and this love, all of the things that you give to us. Help us to be truly thankful. And as we come to your table this Thanksgiving, which all tables as we remember you, Lord, what you did for us, help us to share in this communion of the Holy Spirit together as we sit around the table and we eat the food and we drink from the cup. Help us to remember, to remember you and all that you do for us as our risen Savior every day. In your precious name we pray, Jesus Christ. Amen.